one of my layout um, methods is that if I have a lot of different pieces or cuts to, to line up on two sides of a cabinet, I lay it out on one side and then I put it face to face and then strike my lines off of the other lines. This way there's no error in measuring one piece and then another piece and then coming up with maybe a sixteenth or you know eighth of an inch variance in the way you measured or the thickness of a line. So I mark it on one and then I strike the other board off of the lines that I put on the first board. Uh, let me show you how I cut the uh, these grooves on the ends, on both ends of the board. This is a dedicated router with a quarter inch bit in it. I never change the settings on this router unless of course I'm changing to a new quarter inch bit. And this is a fence that I made uh, a long time ago, maybe 35 years ago. It's very precise, it has a very fine adjustment screw, very, uh, these are quarter 20 locking screws so this can't move. And what I've done is put collars on the bars that go into the router so that this fence always goes into the router exactly the same way and I don't have to keep readjusting it. Alright, now I gotta cut the little uh, tom grooves where all these front pieces are gonna go. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. Since I use standardized methods, one of the things I built again a very long time ago is this square that has clamps on it and uh, has a an adjustment screw here so that you can square it up if it should go out of square and what I what I do is has a retractable pointer pull it out put the pointer on the edge of where you want the groove to be tighten it down retract it and then cut it. Just like that. And then move to the next one. Or another way to do it is cut 
something that won't change, like a piece of aluminum, the exact width of the edge of your router base to the cutting circle of the, of the cutter. That works pretty well also and lets you move along and you don't have to measure anything. So, if I'm here, let me clamp this back down. So I'll have a witness mark in the front, one in the back. I put that down, take my straight edge, Clamp it. Cut the joint. So I, I got to put a tongue on this short three and a half inch piece. And if you try to run this something like this through uh, a molder, it's it, uh, what do you call it, a shaper? It's not going to work. So what you do is you take a bigger board, and you back it up, and you push it through with the bigger board to keep it square. Joints have been cut, and this is the uh, dry run for gluing up all of the where is it? Where's my hand? Oh, there. Yeah. All of the tongues that are on here will be holding the face frame all across around the whole thing and between each draw these are going to be inset draws there's going to be a three-quarter inch poplar frame put on it because this is a paint job so tomorrow morning I'm going to take it apart sand all the pieces before I put it together and glue it up. I'll be doing that off camera because this is, a, this is not an easy glue job. And I can't be worrying about filming it. Alright, see you in the morning. Alright, I gotta cut the rabbits in the side so that the back can be inset. So I'm going to do it on the table saw very quick. I want to leave a half an inch, a uh, quarter of an inch rather. I want to leave a quarter of an inch of material. And I want to make it a quarter deep and a quarter wide.
I make the other cut, so you have to measure to the other side of the blade. inch deep and a half inch of material and there's a quarter inch of material left on the outside. Mm -hmm. and the cabinet's glued up. It took about 45 minutes. Get all the clamps on it and get all the pieces where they belong. Well, you'll notice a few things here. We used calls on the top and the bottom to distribute the pressure across the whole thing. You don't have to use that many clamps. There's another call up there. And one down here. I don't clean up any glue until it sets. If I clean it up now, it's a mess. If I clean it up in an hour or two, I just run a chis sharp chisel under it and it comes right off. Okay, so let's check something out here. Look at these end clamps. They're tight against the bottom side here and they run way out of line up here. And if we go to this side, we see exactly the opposite. They're tight at the top, and they run out at the bottom. Now, why do you think that is? Well, the answer is that the way you position your clamps can actually bring a cabinet into square if it's not. Now when I check this cabinet for square after I put all the clamps on, I was about an eighth of an inch out of square where the top had to move to my right compared to the bottom to bring it into square. And so when you have that kind of missile, you know, uh, situation, if you bring your clamps out at the top, like I have here, it will push that side of the cabinet to my right. And then if we go over to this side, and we see that it's tight at the top, but open at the bottom, these clamps will pull the top to the right. And that, in this case, was enough to square up the cabinet. So how do you check a cabinet like this to see if it's square? You've got all these little compartments, and hopefully you've cut all your joints right, and everything is going to fit right. But when you go to clamp it up, you never know if it's going to come into square or not. You can't really use a square to check for squareness on a cabinet like this. Even on a simple box, because you don't know if the sides of your cabinet 
have a little bow in it that's going to throw your square off. So how do you check it? Well, the answer is you can either use a tape measure, which is kind of awkward in a situation like this, or you can use what we call measuring sticks. And I'll show you what that is. Okay, this is a measuring stick. And it's what it is. This is a small one for small cabinets and small areas. And what it is is a thumb screw uh, with a nut that's braised to a piece of three quarter by three quarter square tubing. And this two sticks. Okay? Inside there's a small thin piece of metal that's welded to one side that the screw presses down on so as not to put the pressions in the pieces of wood. Now you can make these any size that you want. So I have them in a small version, which will measure a square, I guess about 16 inches. And I have an intermediate size. And I have them for 8 foot cabinets, big ones. So let me show you how you use them. What you're doing is you're measuring diagonals. <clears throat> because if your components are cut correctly and everything is square, the question is when you go to clamp it, is it also square? So, you take these sticks and in an area like this, for example, you place the stick inside, you extend it into the corner, you tighten the nut, that's the distance from this diagonal to this one. Take it out, switch it over. If it's the same, it's square. Come down here, do the same thing. It's square, fits there, fits there. Whoop. Then you know you're square. If you put a square in here, and this has got a bow because of the clamp pressure, you're not going to know if it's square or not. The square's not going to tell the truth. Now here we're going to use the big one. Put it in here. Fits. Put it in here. Yeah, that's probably about a 32nd of an inch off. But I'm satisfied with that. For a cabinet like this, that's pretty square. On the other hand, you can take these, you know, another size. You can go into any one of these cavities. Corner to corner, good. Corner to corner, good. It's supposed to be the same, good. Good. 